everybody and welcome back to Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. My name is Diana Rodriguez and I'd like to welcome you to part two of Tsunamis and Printmaking. This is part of a STEAM lesson that incorporates the science of tsunamis with the art of printmaking. Your NGSS standards for this lesson are going to be ESS3 and ETS1. Printmaking is the process of creating multiple works of art, and this is often done on paper. However, it can be done with other mediums, which are cloth, screens, etc. This, pro this production is capable of creating vast works of art. However, each of those works of art is not going to be an exact duplicate. In fact, they're going to each be referred to as an original because they're going to be minute nuances that are different from one to another. Often this is done with the use of paint and transferring from one to another, but this can be done with stamps. In this lesson today, we're talking about the process of wood blocking, the Yukioe method, which means floating world, where you are printing in relief. You are using something that is similar to a stamp in the, in the Yukioke style. These would have been carvings that have, would have been made into wood, where the, the image would have been done in relief and you would have been using multiple pieces for different colors, and you would have been transferring them over time to different productions of art. The art that we're gonna be studying today is one of the most recognizable worldwide in the woodblock print mapping world. It is known as the Great Wave off, off Kanagawa or the Great Wave by Katsushka Hokusai. You'll notice in this image that you have a large wave, which is your, going to be your tsunami. You're going to have a very important feature right here in the center, which is Mount Fuji. That is very important to Japanese culture. It is considered sacred. Additionally, you have some fast moving boats that are in here and some humans that are in there clinging to their oars as this surge of this wave is coming to crash down upon them. This form of art is known as wood blocking, and it is created by carving images intricately into a block of wood. And the images, the upraised surfaces are going to be uh, the result of what is going to be printed in relief, very much like you would expect to see in a stamp that you would use today. Back in the days of the Yukioe wood block printing, they would have made multiple woodblock carvings for different components within this image. There would have been sections for each part and for each color that you see, there would have been a different woodblock print that is done, that would have been done and used today. It would have been rolled with paint over the top of the woodblock, rolled with paint over the top of it, and then it would have been gently transferred onto a surface and then you would have your result. This would be done multiple, multiple times. So for today's activity, you are going to be creating your own relief print, your own woodblock. We're going to use common and recycled materials that you can find in your homes. If you um, purchase any vegetables or meats or things like that, they often come in these styrofoam containers. You can cut these apart into smaller print blocks and you are going to be able to carve your materials in there. You're gonna need two pencils. You're going to need one that is very dull at the end so that you do not poke through your image. You're going to need one that is very sharp as far as sketching. Your first step is going to be that you are going to sketch out your image. Now, I would encourage you to create your own tsunami image. However, you do not have to. Obviously, you can create whatever image you want. But to fit with the, today's lesson, I will encourage you to create your tsunami. So use your pencil to sketch out your coastline, to create your giant wave, to create that crest up at the top and your basic outline. Then you're going to take that image and you're going to place it over your styrofoam plate, your section of styrofoam plate, and you are going to trace it with your dull pencil on the outlines. Okay, and you're going to fill in the negative and positive images. What are negative and positive images? Let's look at some common, common images here. 
A positive shape of a heart would be the heart where it is solid. The negative of the shape would be the silhouette. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, um, we're going to want to trace your outline and then depending on what part that you want to show up, you're either going to color around the edge to make that in relief or you're going to fill it in so that that is what is going, the outside of it is what's going to be prominent. It's totally up to you, but you are creating your picture in either a positive or a negative image. Here's another example of positive and, and negatives with a happy face. Once you are done with carving your image into your, into your template, then the next thing you need to do is you need to select your paints. We love Crayola paints and Crayola materials. So I have, I have for my image, what I chose were different shades of blues and whites to represent those oceanic colors. Now I could choose to make multiple sets of this so that each component of the picture is a different piece, or I can use one piece of styrofoam and take my paint and I can take different colors and put them on the sections of this picture. Very important tip guys, when you're doing this, do not force the paint down into the crevices. If you paint, if you do that, it's gonna come out as one giant blotch of paint. And I'll show you an example of that because I rushed a little bit too much and that's what occurred. You have to use patience with this. If you need to practice, you can do a lot of different images and try positives and negatives to see what is going to work and to see what you want to show up in your image. All right, so now that you have taken your paint and you have painted the sections of your template, let's take a piece of paper and we're going to lay it over the top gently. We're not gonna rub it. We're not gonna smush it and smear it around. We're just going to gently flip it over and lay it down and gently press it. Then we're going to gently take away our template to reveal our image. Okay, so what you're going to see on your image is going to be the exact opposite of what you see in your template. Very much like a mirror image. Now you'll notice how beautiful this came out. I promise you this was not our first attempt. First attempts looked a lot like this. This is what too much paint looks like. This is what not enough paint looks like. This is what happens when you smear it around. And this is beautiful. This is exactly what you want. You'll notice that the carvings, the relief, everything is going to show up and you have positives and negatives. You have depth in your image. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to work on this. And while you are finishing up with your painting, when you are done, I wanna encourage you to talk with your classmates, talk with your teachers, and to compare your findings as to what worked for this and what didn't. What were the elements that you utilized in your composition? And I want you to share that with others and share your choices as to what elements you chose, what colors you chose, and what was the mood and tone in your image. Okay, folks, that's gonna be it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed making your relief print and my Georgia teachers, your Georgia Standards of Excellence and CTA pathways for this are going to be VA6.CR.1, VA6.RE.1, and VA6.PR.1. Bye and have a great day.